Are you not all starting to get a wee bit tired of seeing me? I hope you're not. Hello whiskey folk, hello everyone, welcome to a Sunday night, welcome to another V-Pub, an extended opening V-Pub and that just basically means that there's no guests tonight, there's no structure, there's no agenda, no theme, nothing really planned, just a wee bit of extended opening, just a little pocket of time, a whiskey time on a Sunday night to get together and hang out and uh, chat about all things whiskey. Um, of course, I hope you're not uh, getting fed up with seeing my face Um on the airwaves. I mean, I guess that it's a silly question because you wouldn't be here if you were fed up with it, right? Um, that I've been on a lot recently with the uh, two V pubs a week now, Sundays and Thursdays, they're going out. And obviously, yesterday there was a marathon session. Um, a lot of that was down to me. Obviously, yesterday, the five hour long uh, second uh, rendition of the Lockdown Whiskey Festival, which was a lot of fun, I have to say, honestly. And the reason that I, I just, we all just let that go as long as it did is because it's, that's the point of it. It's it's to have a conversation. It's to talk about the whiskies. And if people are rushed a wee bit, um, I feel like maybe if it's online where people can cut it up into chunks at their own leisure, there's no need to rush it and clip it. But I think we might need to try and work out ways uh, to keep the format a wee bit neater than five hours in future. Uh, for those of you that come along and supported that in that event yesterday, a huge, huge, huge thank you, not just for participating and for tuning in and getting involved in the chat and things like that, but we managed to, online, just while we were live yesterday, we managed to hit the target. And I checked earlier on this evening and realised that we are very, very close, like one or two pounds short, or we might already have broke through £6,000 for Maggie's Highlands. It was amazing. Um, it's just another great, great marker of the generosity of the whiskey community. It's great to have your support yesterday. You can still enter for those prizes, by the way, if you're interested. The prize pool is swelling all the time because there's more donations getting handed in by the industry. I handed in another bottle as well. So, I mean, the chances of you getting a prize is, is getting a bit better as well. Uh, so that's going to be open until Friday, and we'll work out uh, how the prize draw has gone on Tomatin's live stream on Friday night, Friday coming. Good luck, everybody. Some cracking whiskies available. But welcome to you all. I'm going to jump into the chat right now and uh, welcome some of you fantastic uh, whiskey folk and dedicated barflies. Stewie Baby is in saying currently it's £6,255. Absolutely incredible. Jimmy Legg is in saying Roy uh, called you a bad name, but <laughs> Roy called Orange Will a bad name. No, I would never do such a thing. You could start in trouble, Jimmy Legg. Good to have you in, Jimmy. Good to see you. Carl Van Wallingham is in from Belgium. Hi, Roy, and all you barflies. Hello, right back. I hope you're doing well out there, Carl. Kixer Skipper Luke is in as well. Said you're going to go down in history as the lockdown whiskey guy of the year. We all appreciate you giving so much of your time. Luke, thanks so much. You always say such nice things. You're a good, good guy. Um, I think that um, with so much whiskey content going out there in general, I th I'm always amazed that, uh, you know, there's so many of you turning up here still. Uh, when I doubled up on the, the V-pubs, what I imagined I was doing is just kind of making a bit more time while everybody was stuck at home. But what's actually happened to the channel over, over the extra content that I've been putting out there is that it's been it's been growing and swelling. I fully expect tonight to be a wee bit quieter. I would hope so after such a heavy weekend. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's it, it kind of teaches me some things about the channel. And it's kind of making me think in more long term. I was quite happy putting out two V-pubs a month. But the the whole whiskey scene and the whole video whiskey scene is, is accelerating so much. Uh, there's so many people wanting to collaborate, wanting to get involved, wanting to come on and talk about different aspects of whiskey. There's an argument that I might need to, uh, after this thing settles back down again, I might need to redraw what we do with the VPUB. But of course, I'll do what I always do there. And I'll speak to you guys. I'll speak to my patrons and things first and see what's appropriate at that time. These times that we're going through right now remain, even now up until today, quite difficult times. But we don't talk about that in the VPUB if it can be avoided. 
Rico Donert is in. Good to see you, Rico. Good evening, Royce. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too, my friend. Helen Hellswood was in, of course. You hung out with us yesterday, and it was absolutely fantastic to have you and Andy there, Helen. Wonderful stuff. Skogsmart is here saying VPUBs are getting sparse. <laughs> Busy week for you, Hoyt is saying. And if you're talking about sparse in terms of numbers, what are we sitting at just now? 173. I mean, it's still a lot. Of I mean, consider this, that this is the fourth time I've been live since last Sunday night. So that's two hours last Sunday night. There was a three-hour session on Thursday night. It's five hours, five hours yesterday, 10 hours. If you stay for the two hours tonight, it's 12 hours of me. Sometimes it's just a wee bit too much. And I think of all the other things that's happening in between times, club gatherings, other channels, other uh, festivals, other other live streams. There's just so much going on. And I hope that while you're participating in all of this kind of community and this nice uh, whiskey chat and hangout and things. They were all being a wee bit mindful of, of just what we're what we're drinking. I'm drinking more regularly than I ever have, but I don't think I'm drinking any more. I've been keeping a wee tally of what I'm um, I'm pouring and things. And I think Thursday night with uh, Chad and Sarah that was quite a heavy night for me. That was a seven dram night. Yesterday uh, for the festival, I didn't have that much actually. Maybe had four or five drams. Fairly small pours, honestly. But outside of, of those events, I'm just kind of staying away from it. And I'm just having kind of wee tiny pours. And I think we've all, it's just so easy if you're not driving anywhere, if you're not working early in the morning, depending on your own circumstances, it's too easy not to take uh, care. It's too easy not to count them. Um, sometimes when you count them, you give yourself a wee fright. Um, Hoyt is saying a busy week for you. Absolutely, it was a busy week, but it was great fun, Hoyt, honestly. Radek is saying, you're doing a great job, Roy. Thanks. Thank you so much. And uh, Jimmy Legg is saying, I'm tired of that shirt already, Aquavite, but your face never. Sorry, Jimmy. All the on-brand T-shirts and things are in the washing. You'll just have to put up with my shirt. I can't see your shirt. I wonder what kind of shirt you're wearing, Jimmy Legg. Chris Mir is saying, uh, are you fed up with all of us? Do you know what, Chris Samir? Absolutely not. I, I can't imagine that that'll, that'll ever happen. Absolutely not. Uh, Shane, Shane is in as well. Shane Lee, Lee. Shane, you're going to have to phonetically type your name for me to help me out a wee bit. I'm using the VPUBs to measure how many drams I am having in the week. And it's working. <laughs> yeah. So maybe watch how many VPUBs are going out, I guess. Uh, So-called Dram Tram is in. That's either Matt or Caesar. Great to have you in. I think I've seen more of you this week than I have my family. I don't mind it. Well done on your live stream stamina. Well, yesterday took a wee bit of stamina, that's for sure. Tonight, less so. Tonight, I'm just hanging out with you guys. Tonight, it's going to be a lot easier. I'm still looking for Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Has anybody heard anything about the UK release of that? Uh, it doesn't seem to be available anywhere, but it's popping up on social media everywhere. It's nonsense with these regional releases. Maybe it's, maybe it's something to do with the current situation, of course. But I'm trying to get my hands on a bottle of Ardbeg Wee Beastie. I'm, I'm keen to get hold of that. I was looking for it today. Eric Evanson is here. Good to have you, Eric. He's saying, hey, Eric, hey, buddy, Barfly, my family enjoyed your stream on Thursday. Yeah, I've got your message to say that you'd sat the whole family in front of the TV and they were actually quite comfortable sitting there watching it. I hope they're all of age to enjoy whiskey, Eric, and they all had a wee dram as they sat watching it. Uh, but it, it was quite a session. Jimmy's admitting that he's not wearing a shirt. Uh, I kind of had uh, that in my head, Jimmy, that you might be just sitting there screaming about my shirt while you don't wear I, I wonder what the weather's like in Nova Scotia at this time of year. Uh, I noticed uh, the Whiskey Rev, uh, his family sent me a, a WhatsApp today, a video of them walking in Aviemore, and it was bright blue skies, fluffy white clouds, Simpson skies. And then he sent a video five minutes later of the snow coming down in Aviemore. Incredible stuff, incredible weather. Kevin Bryant is saying, evening, uh, all missed yesterday, sipping on a Douglas Lane Rock Island dram. That's a coincidence. So am I. This is the one I bought on the run up to, uh, I bought it because I thought it was decent value. 21 year old blended malt scotch, 46.8%, uh, I think it is. It doesn't say on the tube, does it? Yep, 46.8%. ABV, obviously, with it being a regional malt, it's natural colour, eh, unchill filtered. But it was really good value for a 21-year-old whiskey. Or let's say it was good enough value in order for me to take a bit of a risk on it based on um, uh, based on the experiences I'd had with a scallywag and uh, timorous beastie and things like that. And I have to say I'm enjoying it. 
It's very ashen. It's very smoky. It parades. I said on the on the, the stream yesterday uh, that it's, it parades a wee bit more like an Isla than you might imagine. But it's a good dram. The game thing that we're doing, is it a space side? I've kind of had to think about that. And with the guests that are coming up on the Thursday streams, I think it makes a bit more sense to do the uh, formats like that on Sundays where we don't have a guest and we're not asking someone to sit in the background or whatever for a little while. And also I'm realizing that if we do four, three, four, five people on at a time to play that game, we're having good fun at it, let's be honest, but we quickly go through the whiskeys, don't we? And, it, and I'm not just thinking about all the whiskeys that are available out there in everybody's core range, I'm thinking about the whiskeys that exist in my collection. So I think we'll slow it down a little bit and maybe just do it on the extended opening. And then when everything settles down, we'll work out how we can keep it going and uh, map it into the to the regular Thursday V-pubs. But maybe on a, maybe just have one or two folk in at a time to play along or something. You know, we need to refine these things as we go along, see how it happens. But we're pleased to know tonight, and I'm excited about this, we've got five guys from the London Whiskey Club that have jumped on to help us have a wee game of is it a space side? So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to start grabbing those guys and bringing them in to have a wee bit of fun. Graham Horner is here. Good to see you, Graham, and welcome into the Barflies group. I know that you joined uh, just earlier today. He said, sorry, I'm late. I uh, had some technical issues. I haven't, you haven't missed anything, Graham. Don't worry about it. Stu is saying, enjoyed the anagrams yesterday. Good fun. It was good fun. And I couldn't, I couldn't help but participate. And I typed in one. I got one right. I think it was a McNeera one. I typed in. I realized it was first. I went, oops. And then, then the Douglas Lang one came up as well. And I paused for a second. No one was getting it. I couldn't help myself. Um, but then I realized um, it's not for me to play. It's for everybody else. And I stopped and I sat here quietly. It looked like a great game. And I've, I've watched uh, Dave and Sam playing that before. And it's always looked like a bit of good fun. Um, could get quite competitive. And what I noticed that if you spot it, you spot it immediately. And if you don't spot it immediately, you really struggle. And sometimes it just doesn't come come along. It doesn't come to your mind. Multi-mission is saying, sounds good, Roy. And Donald Passwiss is saying, makes sense not to do those when you have guests on Thursday. Absolutely. And uh, Hell's Widow said, would, would love to have a go. Well, here's how we go. And you'll notice Hel Helen's using some of the new emojis that's available. I put a sniper, uh, a sniper, a uh, sniper reticle on a Glen Cairn for the specifically for that game and the emoji set there. If anybody's trying, um, just just contact me directly and let me know that you that you want to that you want to have a go. I've had a few people, and what I'm trying to do is group people together now, so it makes a bit of sense that they come on. Like the Northern Irish guys, they came on. Um, we had uh, well, tonight. We've got the London Whiskey Club guys with the Nottingham uh, Whiskey Club folk. Um, so I'm going to try and work it that way. I'm going to try and do it uh, in, in kind of groups and get little groups of people on. But if you don't belong to a group and if you kind of find that you're on your own somewhere and you still want to play, absolutely, don't worry about it. Get in touch. And uh, if we keep this game format going, I'm sure there'll be a chance for everybody to come on and have a wee go at it. I got a bit of a kicking last time round, 4-0 down. And I swore that I would practice before the next game, and I haven't done any of that. Can I just say to everybody, um, thanks to everybody for your ongoing patience with me. Uh, the, the growth of the VPUB and the, everything that's been happening recently has been super busy time in whiskey, and I'm behind. I'm behind on messages. Um, I'm usually up to date on Patreon. That's I'm not too bad on that. Emails, I'm starting to get really quite behind again, but all the other messages that are coming in um, from all the other social media channels and things, I'm just doing the best I can to stay on top of them. And I may be a wee bit delinquent with some of you. Please continue to be patient. This week, I'll get a chance to get caught up again. Yes, it's difficult at times. But don't stop uh, reaching out. Don't stop messaging me. Uh, just as long as... And if it's anything urgent... Um, uh, message me lots. <laughs> Email is always the best. Uh, that's always the best way to get through to me. Facebook is probably the worst, and that's just down to the notification system. It's very clunky on Facebook, especially on the branded page, the Aquaviti Water of Life page. I've virtually get no notifications there. I've got to manually remind, remind myself to go in and check the inbox and things in there. Uh, so, so yes, uh, thank you to everybody for your patience. Uh, I've had nobody fall out with me yet. It's wonderful. Helen is saying, talking about groups, uh, any in and around Milton Keynes and Buckingham. Is that where you are, Helen? So Milton Keynes, Buckinghamshire, um, I'm sure, I, I, no doubt, 
that's such a populous area, there's got to be some bar flies located down in that region. And Ian Graham is here. Good to see you, Ian. You, you seemed to really enjoy the Tamdu batch strength number three in the stream yesterday. Yeah, I think I made that quite obvious. It seems like good value, so I may take a punt on a bottle. It's really good. It is really good. And I had it on the back of the, the Tamdu 15, so my palate was right in that zone. And I have to, I have to say, that whiskey at that moment was perfect. I was really enjoying it. And uh, I would stand by anybody on the price that is as well. If you buy that, Ian, and if you don't enjoy it, I'll take responsibility for it and I'll buy it off you. That's how confident I am about it. But you have to be, you have to like Cast Strength Whiskey, High ABV, and you have to like um, that style, that profile of whiskey. So Sherry Cask, exclusively Oloroso Sherry Cask. And Whiskey Throttle, Daniel, so good to see you, my friend, is chiming in to say, I hate Facebook. I'm just not very good at navigating it, Daniel, honestly. Um, I think it's the clunkiest of the platforms that's out there. Uh, I, find, uh, I find other social media platforms a, a hell of a lot cleaner. And Bruno Martins is in, that looks like a new name. He's saying, hi, Akraviti, good to share some time with you. Thank you, Bruno, and uh, it's nice to welcome you in, my friend. Nice to have you here. Cheers. Can I, before I get my friends in, can I share something with you? When I talk about you amazing whiskey community, look at this thing that was sent to me. Uh, hold it up and I hope that you can see it. This is one of these ornamental uh, water delivery systems. So we have a dropper in the middle. Uh, this is from Angel Sheer Glass. Um, it's, got, it's got the angel there. It's got a little hole in it so that you can, you can dip it into the water and let it go. Fantastic thing. Um, it's got the water jug on one side and a mini Glen Cairn for water as well on the other for the dropper. But this is obviously made out of a stave. It smells absolutely fantastic. And somebody sent this to me as a gift. I'll tell you about that in a second. But it said, it's not whiskey until it's shared. It says, happy 50th, Slancha. And then it says here, from all the barflies around the world. My, whisk, my birthday's over now. It's, it's long gone. It's long behind me. But when I was receiving these gifts like this, uh, you could have blown me over with a feather. This came with a, a video as well, a video of so many barflies that had taken time to contribute to a video that had been organized by Andy Ardbaggy. So many of you were involved. It was put together by Chris Moore down at the last drop, and it was sent to me as a finished video. And I, it, I, I'm jokingly saying that it brought on some allergies while I was watching it. I think you understand what I mean. I was so, so, so chuffed and then the gifts came and the gifts continued to come and uh yes this was me in an attempt not to make a fuss i didn't want to talk about my birthday too much but i'd obviously been building up to earlier in the year before this came down on us because we were going to be in in limburg we were going to be on isla this month uh, so lots of us were going to be getting together about that time um but let me just say a heartfelt thank you to everyone. I mean, look at this card that came in as well. This card tells me a lot. There's there's lots of messages in here as well, but it tells me that I need to smile a wee bit more. <laughs> but this is me with uh, Rob, uh, sorry, Rolf's Ebhead. That's his pillow. They brought that over to Scotland last year. We all had a wee go wearing that. Yeah, this is me at the blind tasting. I think this is me at the epiphany tasting. This is me in Germany, Frankfurt. Uh, some glasses down here and this is me and my I lost that hat and I miss it I really miss it I love that hat anyway thank you to everybody thank you for your generous messages your generous gifts the whiskey that was gifted to me I'm going to find uses for it and I'll share it with you uh, you would have seen bottles of it if you look over my shoulder here there's a bottle there from Andy Ardbaggy there's a bottle there from Sid Martin uh, there's a bottle over here from the guys at the Nottingham Whiskey Club that's going to be used I think I'll roll that out when I do when I welcome Julianne Fernandez from Distel in a few weeks' time, eh, I'll use that one. But I'm going to get together on a wee lock-in uh, with uh, the people who who made got these gifts, and eh, we'll share some of these whiskies then. So thank you all so very very much. You're beautiful, beautiful people. Thank you. Okay, let me jump in and start this game. Have a wee bit of fun with it. I'm going to reach out to, I think, uh, give me a thumb if you're ready, James Hope. You're good to go, James. Wonderful stuff. Well, let me click on this.
James, how are you, my friend? I'm very well, Roy. One of the founding members, I believe, of the London Whiskey Club. That's right, yeah. Yeah, one of the four. And a huge long-term supporter of this channel as well. Thank you so much, my friend. I've had the pleasure of your company many times, and I'm looking forward to having a wee bit more when this craziness lifts. I know that you're currently grounded right now, and it must be a tough, tough time for you. I hope that whiskey is helping you get by. Every day. Every day, mate. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> whiskey, is there anything it can't do, right? right. Are, you, are you ready to play a wee game, James, of is it a space side? I'm ready to embarrass myself, yeah. Let's, let's give it a go. Okay, are you asking or are you answering? Uh, I'm going to ask. I, I've been. I hope that you don't mind. I've got my little malt whiskey yearbook just to just to help me out. You've got a cheat sheet in front of you. I was oh, using right. that before. I've got it here in front of me as well. But I find the writing and the wee the wee numbers far <laughs> too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a big sheet put up behind the monitors here, and I'm going to have a cheat sheet behind me so I can. So if you see me playing like this in the future, you'll know I've got a cheat sheet on the go. But I'm just going to go on my gut. But you're asking. I'm going to ask, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So I need to have a whiskey on hand, right? I'm going to grab this one here. It's the only bottle of whiskey that is on the desk in front of me. And I'll say, James, uh, oh, I need the timer, don't I? We need a wee three-minute timer. Uh, it's always a bit of a relief to me still now <laughs> when somebody else is doing the I think the questions still remain a slightly harder thing. Yeah. So. Okay, my friend, good luck. I'll start the timer now. Go ahead. Uh, let's go with the standard. Is it a space side? No. Oh, is it a Highland? Yes. Is it? Okay. Um, is it an island? Malt? No. Okay. Is it a Glen? Yes. Okay, so it's a Glen in the Highlands, it's not an island. Hmm. <laughs> Is it known primarily for a kind of sherry style? Yes. Okay. Is it Glendronic? No. Is just it, when you got excited. Just uh, when you got oh. all. <laughs> Is it Glen Goyne? Yes. How many have I got left? Four. Okay. Three. Um, is it 15 years or younger? No. Is it Glen Goyne 21? No. Ah. Is it Glen Goyne 18? <laughs> no. Oh, no. You're on uh, your last one. Come on. You've got it. You've got it. So, yeah, we said it was over 15. Is it Glen Goyne 25? Yes. Hey. <laughs> the way you asked the questions, I knew I could work out in my head. We're sticking to core range here, obviously. I knew that with three questions left, you would have had it. Well done. Um, you sneaked, you snatched victory, as we say, from the, the jaws of defeat. Well done, James. That's me, one yeah. down. So the, the the prizes go to whoever said Glen Goyne 25 in the chat first gets a prize from me. I've kind of decided with everything that's happening recently that um, what I'm going to try to do is 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 get coins made and give out coins retrospectively to everyone. Optionally, if James um, or myself knows that we can get a dram as a prize to somebody and it's completely legal and there's no shipping across borders or anything dodgy taking place, then of course we can do that as an option as well. But James has just won a coin for somebody in the chat that answered Glenn going 25. Well done, my friend. I'm one down tonight. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll see you very soon, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Well done, James. Damn it. Okay, it's uh, it's uh, another original founder. Some might say the original founder of the London Whiskey Club. Now give me a thumb up, Jez, uh, if you're good to go. I think he might be. He's got a thumb up. Good, good, good. How are you, Jez Batty? 
Very well. Very well. Thank you. Good to see you. It's always a pleasure to see you, Jess. Um, one of the, I would have to say, one of the four or five founding members of the London Whiskey Club as well. We've got a few of them in. Yes. It's going very, very well, Jez, isn't it? Have you ever known a busier time in whiskey? I think the lockdown has a silver lining that we've got so many more members and so many more people interested in the club. Um, we have probably 25% uplift in the club. Wow. Membership. And the membership is not just about people that live close to or local to London. I'm a member of the London Whiskey Club. You've got members yeah. in Norway, you've got members in the States, you've got members all over. And obviously we're able to join in tastings that are scheduled and things, but you're doing online tastings now. You're meeting up with people when they're when they're uh, uh, flying through London or, or, or traveling to London and things like that. Um, yeah. It's a very, very successful little club you've got going, and I wish you the very, very best with it going forward. Always have a very, it's always got a very close, uh, a very soft spot in my heart, of course, because you guys met inside the chat here. Um, That's right. I just love it. I just love that that happens, and now we've got uh, people getting together in Belgium and in Nottingham and other places in the UK, the Northeast and, and Scotland, uh, across America and things. Are hopefully, that's going to continue as well. It's great stuff. That's what it's all about, getting people together. Jez, are you ready for a wee game of Is It a Space Side? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Are you asking or are you answering? I'm answering. Okay. So it's down to me tonight. Okay. I'll put three minutes on a timer for myself, and I'll ask, is that a space side? Jez, is it a space side? No. It's not a space side. Is it a highland? No, it's not. Oh, wow. Is it an yes. isla? No. So it's not a space side. It's not an isla. It's not a highland. It, sorry, did I say? Sorry? It is a, I said it is a highland. Oh, it is a highland. Okay, hang on. So I said, is it a space side? Uh, is it a highland? And you said yes. Okay. Uh, I wonder if your sound has gone a wee bit, a wee bit crazy. Okay, we're on highlands. Is it mainland Highland? My geography is not that good, but yes, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not an island. We're saying then. Okay. Ah. Uh, uh, okay, it's going. To, I'm going to struggle if you don't know where your geography is. Do, if, do you know if, as long as you know where this distillery is, that's kind of important. Is it in the Northern Highlands? Yes. Okay. Uh, is it owned by one of the big four, being Diageo, Grants, Pernod Ricard, or Edrington? No. Okay. Is it peated? No. Oh dear. Is it north of Inverness? Yes. Is it Bal Blair? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get caught out now. Is it Dalmore? Yes. Is there an age statement on it? No. Okay. Is it the Dalmore Portwood? No. Oh! You got too close to it. <laughs> oh, no. What was it? Right way around. What is it? Doc likes it. Um, this is uh, King Alexander. King Alexander. Ah, you caught me out. I'm two down. I'm starting to, the wheels are coming off. I'm not very good at this all of a sudden. Let's see. It's, it's, there are people in the chat getting King Alexander. Absolutely. People getting Dalmore King, King Alexander well ahead of me. Well done, Jez. You, uh, uh, you beat me. You beat me with a Dalmore. Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> well done, buddy. Thanks for joining. Thanks for participating. Thank you. See you soon, Jess. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, now I'm struggling, but there's five in tonight, so I've still got a chance. I've still got a chance. 
Who should I bring in now? Let's look, ask for if Mikey, hey Mikey, are you in good shape? Can you come in now? He's giving me a thumbs up, superb. Now Mikey, he's a guy that I've been able to hang out with up here in Glasgow. We dropped by and you had a bit of a moment with a Klein oh, you and I together. Yes. Still one of your favourite whiskies ever? Yes, it is. That was a very special moment and I'll get yep. to uh, share it with you as well, Roy. It was, it was, it was a peach. It was an absolute peach. I have to say that I wish, um, unfortunately, I don't, I don't even want to say what kind of whiskey it was. I've probably said it enough times uh, because the price has just gone up and up and up and it's getting harder and harder to get a hold of, Mikey. <laughs> but one day, if you ever come by here, there'll be another one of those waiting for us both to enjoy together. How about nice. that? I look forward to it. Are you ready to play a wee game of, is it a space aid? Yes, I am. Are you asking or answering? I am not asking. No way am I asking. <laughs> I'll be answering. I can handle yes, no questions, hopefully. Okay. Okay. Well, I just get toasted by, by Jez, but we'll give it a go. Okay. Let's let's ask, Mikey, Are you? do you have a space aid on hand? No, I don't. Is it Highland? Yes, it is. Is it mainland? Yes, it is. Oh, this is when it gets tough. Oops, <laughs> I've hit the button. Um, let's go with, is it one of the big four, Diageo, Grants, Edrington, or Pernod Ricard? No, it's not. <sighs> is it Southern Highland? Yes. Is there an age statement on it? Yes, there is. Is it 46% or above? Yes, it is. Is it Deanston? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Let's just go with it. Is it Deanston 12? Yes, it is. Oh! You, I you thought I tried to man. catch you out with, yeah. <laughs> you kind man. You know so much, Mikey. <laughs> You're very welcome. Right. On hand, I love this stuff. And if I'd, if I'd not got Deanston 12, there would have been um, <laughs> hilarity <laughs> thrown at me, no doubt. Wonderful. That's why I tried. That's why I tried. Thank you, buddy. And, and I want to say thank you as well for the wonderful video you put together, that kind of parody, that little homage for my birthday. He put, Mikey put a paper beard on, he put a paper tuft at the front of his head, paper on the side, and uh, pretended to be to be me. He involved these kids and everything in it as well to have a wee bit yeah. of a laugh. It was great fun, Mikey. You didn't offend me in the slightest. It was great stuff. Good stuff. Thank my so eight-year-old is now uh, walking around the house. He does Roy impressions around the house. <laughs> What's his name? Logan. Ah, Logan. Bless you, Logan. Roy Impressions. Maybe I'll get a chance to shake his hand one day, Mikey. Thank you so much Absolutely. for listening. No problem. Speak soon. And I'll catch you soon, buddy. Take care. Chat soon. Bye-bye. Stay around till the end. Yes, I've got one on the board. I've got a chance. I can come back. Uh, but I'm up against it here because the two guys that are left will no doubt be playing tricky. Uh, let's see. Who do we have? And somebody's dropped out. We're down to four. We're missing one of the participants, but one of them's still here. So let's see if uh, Shiv can make it back in. Connor, are you in good shape? Yeah, he's giving me a thumbs up. Excellent. We've got Connor Strang. Oh, yeah. Now, you've been on before, big guy. We've had you on. You, I remember we had you on while you were still over at Foursquare, right, and distilling in the Caribbean. You're still distilling now? Uh, yeah, well, not right now because of the lockdown. but Current circumstances um, notwithstanding, of course. And enjoying it, yes. Do you still have uh, aspirations to get yourself into distilling in Scotch? You think that would be a thing you would enjoy? Yeah, uh, blending as well. Sort of blending. Like recipe stuff, recipe creation. Yeah, wonderful stuff. I hope you get there too, big guy as well. Connor, uh, I just want a, wee, a story about Connor. He met me in Glasgow and uh, offered me a blind sample of something that he had just uncorked. And if my memory serves me, was it a 1977? Correct, yeah. 1977 Brora. It was sublime. But I always have a go at him because when I guessed it out the traps as a Klein leash, he said no. <laughs> Strictly speaking, technically you were right, but you're also technically wrong as well. <laughs> but it was great fun and it's a brilliant thing for you to, to have shared with me. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, are you asking or answering tonight? Uh, I'm asking. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll get rid of the Glen Goyne and I'll pick up this one instead. Okay, my friend. Go ahead. Is it from the mainland of Scotland? Yes. Good question. Um, is it Speyside? Yes. Oh, um, is it owned by one of the uh, big four that you specified earlier? Big four blending houses? Yes. Diageo? No. Okay. Uh, Perno? Yes. Okay. And it's got to be core range. So, um, core range, yeah, of course. Does it have an age statement? Uh, yes, it does. Is it Strathyla? Oh, wow. He's going for a sniper. What did you say? Strathyla? Yeah. No. Abalawa? No. He's shooting. He's sniping. Long, long worn. Great guess. It's not. Oh, I'm trying to think of what else they've got that's got an age statement on it. Um, as I'm missing off a really obvious one. <laughs> it's great to see so many folk in the in the lounge playing along as well. Um, I guess, I mean, it's going to be something really obvious. I'm just putting a blank on what else, who else they own. Um, because the only one I've got one I can think of is Tormor that has an age statement, but it won't be Tormor. I'm wondering if that's a question. Yeah, so is that that is my question. Is it Tormor? It's not. You've got one no. last chance, buddy. Let's see if you can snatch it. Come on, dig deep. Um, I never set the timer for you. <laughs> ding, yeah, ding, I, ding. I, I don't know. What I'm out, I think. So the only other one I know that they own is okay. Ultra Den, I think. But I'm out okay. of I've got a pool of bank on what they own. Okay, so you've, you've run out of steam? Yeah. <laughs> you're going to kick yourself. But what yeah, I'm yeah. more nervous about, Connor, is that when we meet up again, you're going to kick me. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Levitt, 12. Oh, yeah, of oh. So well. I just kind of forgot about it. Yeah, it's the ubiquitous, right? I mean, it's it's uh, often it's, it's certainly one of the top top three, perhaps often, uh, very often, most likely top two, sing in terms of single malt sales. Mm. But we always we always forget about it um, as as whiskey enthusiasts as well. But there you go, one of the top sellers. That means. That I love you, big guy. It means that I've got another one on the board, so I've pulled it back. It's all going to be down on Shiv's shoulders as to, as to whether I get a win tonight or a loss. Connor, thanks for coming along and participating. I hope you can hang out for a wee bit longer, my friend, and stay till the end. Yeah, definitely. Take care, buddy. See you soon. Yeah. Yes, I've managed to pull it back again. So whoever said uh, Glenlivet at 12 in the lounge, uh, you've won a wee dram tonight. And if it's Connor Strang that's going to be able to furnish you with a dram, he's brought some amazing whiskies to share with me. Honestly, whiskies that would just, whiskies that I never even thought I would be able to hold in my hand, he's uh, been able to share. Shiv, you're the decider. Give me a thumbs up if you're good to come in. I hope Shiv can hear me. It doesn't. I don't know if he can hear me. If you Give me a thumbs up, my friend. Let's try it. Let's see if Shiv... Are you here, Shiv? Hi, hi. Oh. Is, is it not working? Disconnect. Pull, pull out the, pull out the, pull out your buds and see what happens. Wait, does that work? Uh, yes, it is working now. Ah, okay. That's enough. As long as... My my desktop gave up on me. I'm sorry. 
No, don't worry. As long as we can see and hear you, buddy, it's always great to see your face. You know, I've been able to hang out a few times now, and it's this is the first time I've been able to welcome you in on a VPUB, my friend. Thanks so much for participating. But you know, there's a lot of pressure here now because one of us is going to either win it for the London Whiskey Club or lose it for the London Ooh. Whiskey Club, right? <laughs> so can I ask, are you asking or answering? Oh, I'm answering. Oh, you're answering. Okay, so it's down to me to come up with the questions then. Okay, buddy, here goes. Are you ready for me? I'm obviously yes. going to ask you, is it a space side? No. Is it a Highland Shiv? Yes. Is it a mainland Highland? No. What's oh, an island? Okay, good, good. So, uh, okay, is it owned by one of the big four? Uh, that is Pernod Ricard, Diageo, Edrington, or Grants? No. No, okay. Is it an Aaron? No. Oh, wow. Is it a Jura? No. Oh, wow. So Orkney is wiped out. Scap is Pernod Ricard. Highland Park is Edrington. Talisker is wiped out because it's Diageo. Aaron, Jura, O. Okay, let's, I, uh, I think I messed it up a little bit. I'm okay, sorry. okay, okay. Well, where do I have so to go back to? Okay, is it owned uh, by one of the big four? No, we can go back to Highland, sorry. It is not a Highland. It's not a Highland? No. Okay, so that's me right all the way. Okay, I said, is it a space side? Then I said, is it a Highland? Yeah. And and it's it's not a Highland. Yes. Okay. Is it? Uh, but it's not. It's definitely not a space side either, right? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's ask then. Is it a? Is it a Campbelltown? No. Is it an Isla? Yes. Ah, okay, we're, we're there. It's an Isla. Okay. Is it one of the southern Isla that is Ardbeg, Lefroy, or Lagavulin? It is. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, how to... how to uh, Does it have an age statement? Yes, it does. Okay. Is it Lagavulin? No. Oh, my goodness. That wasn't a good question then. Is it Lefroy? No. <gasps> Is it Ardbeg 10? No. So the only other age stated is Ardbeg Trayvon, 19 year old? No. Is this core range? It is now. You've got your hands on an Ardbeg wee beastie? Yes. Chef Joshi, you're the wee beastie. <laughs> You're the wee beastie. <laughs> oh, I get it. Then. Oh, you're a bad man. <laughs> At the start of the stream, I'm talking about how nobody's managed to get their hands on it. Where did you get it? Uh, from Netherlands. You got it from the Netherlands. You sneaky, sneaky man. You did. Oh, you got oh my goodness me! <laughs> well, even the even the crowd. Gabriel Welding is calling you cheeky as well. That's uh, Rolf Ebhead is saying wonderful. That is the sneakiest move but fair play to you because you've pulled it out the hat for london whiskey club shiv uh, your friend your friends will be backstage raising a glass for you well done buddy oh, yes, Nightmare. Yes. <laughs> from here on every time i see you in the chat buddy i'm going to refer to you shiv the wee beastie i, I, I changed my handle to it <laughs> sorry i changed my handle to wee beastie now yeah, that's right, your new handle, Shiv the Wee Beastie. Well done, buddy. Stay around till the end, won't you? Thanks for coming in and participating, Cheers, and well done Cheers, in the victory, Shiv. Cheers, Cheers slant you. Oh, my goodness. A wee bit gutted. I was doing the maths in my head, and I kind of got to the last couple of questions, and I thought, it's an ad beg, and it's got an age statement. I, I've got this. There's only two. There's that big ten, and the the annual release of the 19 year old Trayvon. I'd forgotten that the wee beastie now exists. 
after mentioning it earlier in the stream as well, I'll need to try and get my, my hands on a bottle. Um, I forgot to ask Shiv, maybe if Shiv drops in a wee bit later in the stream, uh, we can get his feedback on it. But I think the feedback so far uh, from the reviews and things that I've read is that it's uh, pretty solid and does exactly what it says on the tin for an Ardbeg uh, five-year-old. Let's pull up this chat so that we can hang out with you a wee bit. Ah, oh dear. So these uh, extended opening sessions are kind of more about an interactive thing. So let's talk about whiskey. You can ask me any questions that you like. You can uh, pose any observations, and I'd be happy to try and read it out to you. What we try and do on the on the extended opening sessions is not have uh, themes, structure, agendas, guests, that kind of thing, and just use it to kind of relax and dram. What I usually do is I reach into my uh, my little sample box, but it's sitting over my shoulder here, down the bottom there. But I had enough samples out here from previous uh, sorties, let's say, that I decided that uh, I would just do that instead. This one, I'm going to wait a wee bit. I'm not going to open this right now, and you'll see why in a second. Uh, Luke Gixer Skipper was in earlier, and I, I did. I called him out as being a very, very nice man, and I want to give you an example of how nice a man he is. He's given me a generous sample here of a tomatin, but it's not any old tomatin. Um, I might just actually pour it right now. Let's because what will happen if I don't pour it now? I'll forget. I've never tried this. I've tried some mature tomatins. I really have, but this is a thirty-year-old tomatin from Luke. So to celebrate whiskey in general, to celebrate the generosity of this community, this amazing community. And uh, the generous look, I'll tell you a wee story. His dad is Glenn, Dancing Midgey. You'll sometimes see Dancing Midgey in. Um, that's uh, Luke's dad. And uh, he put a post in the Aquavite Barflies group on Facebook. That's a group, by the way, that existed purely to try and bring people together in real life. Little did I know that within a year of creating that group that we'd be in this situation. But regardless, we will come out of this situation and the Barflies group continues to grow as a community on Facebook. Uh, you can just search Aquavite Barflies on Facebook. Um, and we heard the story about Luke that uh, he'd purchased online a wee bottle of teapot dram for himself. But what his dad didn't know is that he'd also got him a bottle for his dad as well. And on the way out to work on his motorbike, he dropped by his dad's house and through social distancing, just rang the doorbell and left a bottle of teapot dram on the doorstep for his dad. So here's to you, Luke. Here's to your dad, Glenn. And here's to your generosity, and thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful dram. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it to the side for a wee bit. I can tell that it deserves a wee bit of respect. After 30 years, we can wait a little, right? Whiskey Throttle Daniel saying a tomatin 30-year-old won some nice awards. Yes, I'd heard that. I'd heard that. And while it was pricey, I mean, it's a 30-year-old whiskey, it's not as pricey as some. Uh, being a tomatin, I think. Rucker Lachis saying, share a bottle and got 10 CL of the Beastie. Many bottle shares happen here in Germany, Aquavite, and I haven't tasted it yet as I go blind for first sips with my GF girlfriend pouring something for me at random. Ah, you do the same thing as I do, don't you, Ruka Like, So what happens is that I'll often just ask my wife to just bring me a dram and she'll go to the cabinet and she'll just pour something randomly. But I've always got this kind of mental idea of what's sitting within reach at the front of the cabinet. So I'm always second guessing myself rather than just going with it, just going with instinct. I'm always thinking about what my whiskies are rather than trying to let the whiskey talk to me for a little while first. So I always make a mess of it. Get, uh, Luke is in here saying Slancha. Thank you so much, Luke. You're a star. Thank you. Um, yes, it's a fun game to play, and I encourage everybody to do it. And you know what? Even if you're, if you find yourself that there's nobody around to kind of pour you a dram or something, just pour three small drams, three glasses next to each other. Pay no attention to which is which. Find some way of marking it. A tiny wee colour dot on the bottom, tiny little uh, marker pen or something, and then just mix it up. And let your mind drift as you mix up. There's no way you can keep track. It only takes a few, uh, a few switches, and you've you've got no idea what's in what glass. And when the profiles are kind of similar and the colours of the liquid are kind of similar, you can find yourself second guessing and sending yourself in circles all over the place. 
It's great fun to do, though, and it does make you dial right into the whiskey. It's very much an analytical thing. It's not something that you would often do in company unless your company was as geeky as you are, if you're getting up to such things. But it's good fun. Raster is here. Good to see you, my friend. Always good to welcome you in, Raster. He's saying, have you tried Wee Beastie? Desperate to try it. I'm really looking forward to trying it. The, the reason I want to get behind Be Wee Beastie is that one of the biggest producers out there, one of the biggest brands in whiskey, has just released a core product that's going to become part of their core range. Um, and you can argue that it's pricey for a five-year-old whiskey. It's £39 in the UK. It's going to be somewhere in the order of $50 in the US. I don't know, maybe €45 Euros in Europe. I don't know, honestly. But if you're a peathead and you're into peated whiskey, that's the style of and profile of whiskey that you really are going to love. Young, bold, powerful, spirit-driven uh, peat prospect. That's what you're after. And one of the biggest producers have put a big single digit five-year-old age statement on the front is something that I've been asking for the industry to have more confidence over for a long, long time. It can only be a good thing. Um, the fact that it's our big that's done, that's done it is exciting, honestly. And I think the final piece of that perfect puzzle is if it's a decent whiskey, if it's an enjoyable dram. Eric Evanson is saying, so what special dram did you pour for your 50th? I had lots of nice drams, Eric, but I didn't crack or open anything special for my 50th. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's a treat for patrons uh, when I do a, a patron-only stream. Um, uh, it's, I know it's going, to be a, it's going to be a long time before I get around to doing that. It's going to be tricky uh, just because I'm putting out two lives a week. And my patrons have been really, really patient because in April they didn't get a lock-in at all. They didn't get a patron-only stream. But that's when I'm going to open something that I've been keeping for a little while. And, uh, uh, yeah, just kind of share uh, my... And, and, uh, I'll keep it under my hat just now, if you don't mind. Tom Lawrence is saying, I often find that I like the nose of a whiskey more than the palate. Can you recommend a dram whose taste is married well to its aroma? I am a sucker for something that, uh, once you get a taste for it, I think it's hard to see past. We've already touched on it earlier in the stream, and that's that kind of creamy white candle wax aspect to Klein Leash. If you once once you start to smell that and and label it as such and understand it as such, and then taste it in the in the glass itself, um, along with the texture, um, when you get a good Klein Leash, uh, or any any nice kind of waxy whiskey that does the similar thing. So Dalyun from a bourbon cask is a good one. Uh, Deanston's can often be a good one. Deanston Organic, in my experience, would be the closest experience that. Uh, that would, that would give you that experience. 15-year-old organic. The first Deanston organic that came out was a 14-year-old. Um, but yeah, you just just keep trying, Tom. Just kind of, um, I'm looking at your icon. You're Zenbud, Tom, aren't you? So that's the first time I've made that. You've obviously changed your name. It's the first time I've made that connection. It's nice to have those wee pictures there. But there's lots of whiskies that can do that. There's lots of whiskies that do... Um, uh, match their, their, the aromas, the, the nose when you smell the whiskey, the, the palate follows and matches quite well. I would imagine it's quite a subjective thing, but to give you an example of when it works and it works well, that's what came to mind there. Hope you get a chance to enjoy a nice clean leash. The 14 year old can often be very, very good. Kim Bryant is saying, I heard you ask, but may have missed any response. What's happened to our big wee beastie? Yeah, we're hoping that it's going to come out at some point soon. I've been looking around. Graham Horner is saying, have you polished the Eagle Rare off yet? Yes, Graham, it's, it's finally gone. And a really nice night on Thursday night, and I hope you guys did too. But bourbon's not a popular thing, really, for a lot of my audience. I understand that. Um, but I think that the feedback that I got, the majority of folk are really open-minded, and they, they do enjoy, even if it's just occasional bourbons, and I was also surprised how many of my audience, the folk that tune in uh, and hang out with us here, are big bourbon fans. I think Gennado is really knowledgeable as well. I shared Stefan Novak's quiz that he prepared for that night. Now, Chad was preparing the quiz, but Stefan had prepared a bourbon quiz in advance, not without knowing that Chad was doing it. So what I did is I shared uh, Stefan's quiz. Um, once uh, my patrons have finished answering that quiz and, and entered themselves into a wee uh, prize giveaway that I'm doing for them there, I'm going to release that quiz publicly so anybody can participate in it because the questions are fantastic and really quite insightful as well. Everwind is saying, how malt mates? A little late, but happy to join. Everwind, it's always great for you to turn up however, whatever time you get here. 
Uh, Royale is in saying, uh, I play, is it a space side at home now? Based on the bottles we have, <laughs> which makes our odds a wee bit better. Tonight's was Tam the Villain Double Cask, which she got in six. Fantastic. So the, the idea that I'm getting other people to play that, that same thing is brilliant. Uh, David Parks is saying, is Thursday's VPUB uh, what the next... Uh, what's the next bourbon you're buying? David, uh, on Thursday this week, I'm really excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm hoping everything goes well. We've locked in uh, Billy Walker from Glen Allachie, uh, a guy with a fantastic pedigree in the whiskey industry. Uh, he's most famous in recent years probably for the Ben Riak Whiskey Company, putting him in charge of Glen Dronach, Glen Glasson, and Ben Riak, uh, reinventing brands there, bringing them back to life, especially in the case of Glen Glasson. Um, and uh, he was widely applauded for his work that he did there. He's now in Glenallachie, and that's fascinating because per Pernod Ricard treated Glenallachie perhaps a lot like they treat some other distilleries out there like Longmorn or Tormor or uh, lots of other distilleries. We just don't get a chance to engage with these distilleries in Glenallachie. We never saw any whiskey from them. There was a budget whiskey came out a couple of years ago as a single malt, but Glenallachie was something you could only get through independence. Then Billy Walker comes along and completely reinvents the whole lineup. He, he, he managed to get his hands on a distillery with a decent deep stock. So he was able to create from scratch a, a decent core range of products, lots of single casks, lots of whiskey out there to, to stimulate the interest. Um, but he's obviously now made changes at Glen Allachie and he's designing a vision for the future. So he's developing from virtually a clean sheet. And I'm excited to invite uh, Billy Walker on and just to get some insight and inside uh, stories from him and things, what his vision is for Glenallachie. That'll be the next VPUB. Super excited about that. Uh, Alfie Robinson is saying, Hazelburn 10, do we consider that waxy? Eh, I don't know. Not really to my mind. Hazelburn's always kind of been a, a quite a honeyed, uh, light prospect, still with that kind of Campbelltown Springbank DNA in there. It's often been had quite a unique take on it. Uh, Hazelburn, of course, is from Springbank Distillery, Triple Distilled. Would I consider it waxy? It's never struck me as such, Alfie, but that's not to say that it isn't. be interesting. Uh, and Tom Lawrence is admitting, yes, he's just switched from Zenbud. Tom, fantastic to know that uh, you and Zenbud are one and the same. Jan-Paul van der Hoven is here saying, five-year Ardbeg. Are young whiskies getting better than before with climate change and raise an average temperature? I wouldn't think that that's got anything to do with it. I think that it's people are taking care more care over the new make, over the new distillate. They're realizing they're realizing that single malt is a real thing that people are willing to pay a premium price for when it's good. That's what it's all about. I think it's just market dynamics. People have really embraced a single malt when it's of good quality. Here's what is saying. I had an email from Arbeg saying due to the situation in UK, release was delayed, but to stay tuned for news. Well, at least I don't mind it being delayed. At least we've got a chance of getting it. I wonder if it's difficult, if there's going to be a clamour for it. I believe it to be quite a large scale release, so I hope that we can get it. Uh, Graham Fraser is saying there's a blatant sample for you, Roy. See your email. Graham, I clocked that there was an email from you there. Um, as I said earlier in the stream, I'm grateful to everybody who's been really, really uh, patient with me recently and I'm, and I'm quite a few days behind on email just now. I'm getting back and answering emails uh, but just be a wee bit patient. In the next couple of days I should be able to uh, have caught back up again. Ernie is in and Ernie's saying just found the wee beastie at my lo local retailer online $50. So I was right about uh, pretty much buying on I think I guessed about $50. Um, I wonder if you've uh, decided if you want to try it yet, Ernie. Eric is saying, been looking at a visit in Scotland. Any advice on how to save dollars as well as places I must visit besides visiting you, of course? Because it's going to be interesting because if we if we go through a, a, a it's difficult, I don't want to talk about the thing, right? The C word. But if we find that um, a lot of businesses are suffering and the capacities drop, transports drop, tours have dropped, all of these things drop off. It could be difficult. I wouldn't make any plans right now, Eric. I would wait to see just how things are going forward. If things can start to get back to some shape of normal within this year, I think I'm almost at the point that I would probably take that now. I'm hoping that we can start to see things uh, ease off a wee bit, but without putting anyone at risk, obviously. I would say that I've got lots of advice into uh, visiting Scotland. Yeah, the normal ones, the obvious ones, I would say, don't try to visit too many distilleries. One or two maximum per day. 
if they're close by neighbours and just uh, taking the environment a wee bit more let a bit of serendipity and fate come into the, your trip and planning as well walk around in the environment uh, talk to people and visit things that are close to the distilleries not only the distilleries that would be my biggest piece of advice accommodation can be tricky and during high season in scotland especially in the the tourist hotspots. Uh, so book your accommodation well in advance things like transport how you're going to get around you can deal with that a bit closer to the time but your accommodation is a must Jimmy Legg is saying Aquaviti, 240 people in the V-Pub. No one is tired of you yet. Well, there will be people out there that are getting tired of me. But you know what the thing is? Is that this whole thing, this thing that we do is when you're in the mood, you consume it and you enjoy and you partake. And when you're not in the mood, you just leave it alone. And it's it's designed to wrap around your life when you can accommodate it. That's what it's all about. That very much includes me as well. I'm very grateful for the folk that are hanging out with me during these days. Um and uh, as I always say, it's, it's, it's really a privilege and it's really fun for me. I look forward to it. Scogsmart is saying, what is the most interesting whiskey aged in an unusual cask you have had? I'm going to answer that by saying interesting and unusual, but not good. And it was an SMWS Glen Murray from a gin cask. It was bogging. <laughs> <laughs> to use a Scottish word. They often say that there's no such thing as a bad whiskey, and that whiskey wasn't bad when it went into that cask. But when it came out, it wasn't very nice. So imagine dry, aromatic, bitter gin flavours coming out of a whiskey. It didn't work. It wasn't a bottle that I... Uh, uh, would go, I don't think it's legal now actually, gin casks are not permitted um, but that one obviously was at a time where it, where it wasn't defined I know you're looking for a better question in that Scogsmart or a better answer to that question but that's all I can come up with just now, that was pretty much interesting and unusual uh, but not in an enjoyable way uh, Rooker Lax is saying the quiz by Stefan Novak was so much harder than Chad's. I got three instead of seven, Aquaviti, but it would be nice to see Chad stand up to that challenge. Yeah, we could encourage Chad to have a wee go at that. I might send him a wee message and ask him to do that. I think he'd score high. Whiskey Novice is saying Hazelburn, soft, 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 but lovely. Yeah, but, I, I, you know, there's a good bit of spice on, on Hazelburn. Um I mean, you, you think because it's triple distilled, because it's Springbank's lightest, if you compare it to the other Springbank expressions, you think it's going to be a soft prospect. But if you sip it in isolation, you often find yourself realising that it's actually got a lot to offer. Now, there are people out there that just don't really get Hazelburn. They don't understand it. They don't get it. They would, they would perhaps wonder why it exists alongside, maybe they favour Springbank or Longrow or something. But it's not to be compared to stable mates. Springbank is sorry, Hazelburn is a I think it's about the weightiest, meatiest of the triple distilled spirits that are out there. Triple distilled are Ochentoshin, Ben Romac do a triple distilled. Who else did a triple distilled recently? Uh, it's left me. Um but if you were to compare it against that and Irish whiskies, there's lots of weight and richness to it that it doesn't behave like a triple distilled, not to me. Not to me, not to my inexperienced palate. Lee J. Brown is saying, Roy, any whiskey heroes you would like uh, to talk to on a V-pub? <sighs> ones, ones that I can still reach out to. Well, for me, uh, the, the two guys that I wanted on a V-pub more than any were Charlie McLean and Ralphie, and they've both been here. Um, it would be great if there was a nice topic, a nice reason, a nice uh, crossing of paths to bring either of those guys back on again. Um, in terms of going forward, there's a bunch of people. I mean, I would like to have people, not just that are in the industry, actually working hands-on. like to have whiskey commentators, kind of whiskey folk. Uh, recently, I saw uh, Mark Gillespie on WhiskeyCast. He'd put together... Um, uh, well, because Mark's been in the game for so long, he's got contacts, he can reach out to people and get these people on his show. So there's a lot of people that's appearing on his show, I think. You know what? Some of the things that they've mentioned or that they've touched on, would make a fantastic topic for a VPUB because you know the thing with the VPUB is that it's not because I don't want them on necessarily to, to, to sell a thing or sell a I want 
I want to get the human side, I want to get the stories, I want to get the angles, the perspectives, the slightly different takes on things. So when they when they talk about certain concepts, that that I find that really, really interesting because it tells you just how much these people know, but it tells you in a context that shows how much they actually know and understand how much experience that they have in whiskey. Um, I mean, I'm thinking about people like, I, I was very, very interested in some of the things that came out from Bill Lumsden when he was talking. Uh, Dave Broom, fascinating guy to talk to, Dave Broom. Um, so there's lots of people out there that would be very interesting uh, to get the human story from, you know. Hoyt is saying three distilleries a day was a bit much. It's too much. It's too much Hoyt, especially if you're tasting. My goodness. What are you going to taste? Really, by the time you get to the third distillery, um, it depends. It depends on how much, of course. Uh, Vlad is saying, "I have seen slain Irish whiskey behind you. Is it good? It's not even opened yet." Uh, that was. I have an, an Irish friend that lives down south, Louis Orange, my friend Louis, and he sent that up for my birthday. He sent me a wee bottle of whiskey. I, his birthday was the. Uh, we both turned fifty this year. I sent him a wee bottle of something. He sent me a wee bottle of something. So that's sitting there from Louis. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I don't really know slain. I don't have any intelligence about it at all. So I need to spend a bit of time. Oh, the chat has jumped. Wow, I was really quite behind on the chat anyway. It's good that it jumped, sorry. Whiskey Novice Jim is, uh, Jim is saying, Can Envy is the other triple. Can Envy is not triple distilled, is it? Had I just forgotten that? Can Envy is triple distilled. Oh, wow. Maybe I know that it was silent for a while. It could be. It could be. I didn't know. I didn't know that uh, Can Envy was triple distilled, Jim. Or if I did know, I'd forgotten about it. Uh, Scogsmart is saying, I was looking for that kind of answer. Good wasn't a qualification necessary for it being good or interesting. Thank you, Scogsmart. Means that I've, I've answered you okay. A gin finished whiskey. It wasn't very good. Donna Pass is saying, any word yesterday on whether the festival bottles will end up in stores i haven't heard anything yet i'm kind of hoping that they put the festival bottles in some kind of fair platform online and they announce it in advance and they've got a robust server to deal with the inevitable rush that there's going to be for them i'm not going to participate in that it's not going to be for me you don't need to, you're not going to be competing for me to purchase any of those um but yeah i know that a lot of people are really keen to get their hands on the festival bottlings, especially since they're not able to travel when they had plans to travel there. Michael Lennis saying, Glasgow Distillery have a triple distilled whiskey coming this year. Absolutely. And there's lots of kind of experimentation going on there as well. Everwind uh, is saying, Serge from Whiskey Fun. Serge, I would love to have him on. Uh, I managed to meet him uh, back at one of the old and rare festivals. Um, and we chatted for a little bit. And I was really pleased at how gracious the man was and how... Uh, interested to just chat in general. I bought him a 1958 Abelauer, and that's what we drank together, a 1958 Abelauer. I asked the guy at the stand, I said, you know, what's interesting, what's curious? And I'd bought one, and Serge came along, and I said, he asked what I was drinking, and I told him, and I said, would you like to try it? And he said, and he thought I meant just a sip of mine. And I, and I bought him a dram, and he was like, oh. And I said, no, no, please go ahead. And the two of us chatted over that. Richard Agnew is saying Angus McGrailed, again, another superb guest. He would be absolutely fascinating to talk to, not just about whiskey in general, but he would be an amazing resource to talk about whiskey history, antique whiskies, things like that. Absolutely. Hoyt is saying, have you enjoyed our pick of our small ravine in spring? We consider that to be a major topographic feature in the Midwest. Uh, is that in the Aquavitae Barflies page? Did I see that, Hoyt? Um, thank you very much, my friend, for your for your virtual chat and for sharing any of the pictures that are picturesque near where you live. Slancha. I'm going to have a wee rinse of that. This is very dry, very ashen, but quite, here we're going to use the word again, Moorish. It's an enjoyable whiskey from Douglas Lane, this uh, 21-year-old. See how this tomatin's coming on. Okay. 
the edge is there, but there's a fresh note to it as well. Like a pineapple thing. But it's got this dusty dunnage. Dry dunnage note to it. God, kind of a baked note. Baked. Pineapple and bread, but quieter than I imagined it to be. Just going for a wee sip. Oh, wow. So this is 46% ABV. Plays like 40. Super soft. Very, very... Wow. <clears throat> wow. This is a take your time with it bottle. Lots going on. So the biscuit thing is definitely there. It plays through the fruity thing there. But the fruit, where it was on the nose, it was quite bright. The, the fruit is... It's, 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 it's not fresh fruit suddenly. It's... It's a little bit like soft tropical. If anybody's ever tried a really old blend, the, the soft kind of really quiet tropical notes that you get from one of these old blends, it's like that. What kind of fruit would, would I say? But it's clean. It's kind of it's nice, clean, tropical fruit. Finishes long for it being such a light whiskey. I wonder what kind of cask this is from. This is uh, from Batch 2, Bottle 1083, Tomat 30-year-old. Imagine it's the official Tomat 30. It's very light in colour. See how pale it is. Refill cask right up my street. Oh my goodness, I'm going to need to put a lid on this. Shortcake. This is shortcake. Nothing exists. No pineapple shortcake that I've ever tried exists, but this is like a pineapple shortcake. I've just come off a, a relatively heavily peated dram. So it took, it's taken a couple of sips, but now it's this is super complex. This is a lovely whiskey, kind of a cinnamon ginger thing now in the finish. A bit soft, really nice, really clean. How much is tomato in 30 year old? <laughs> Let's have a laugh. <laughs> I only need to put tea in my browser and it comes up with the whiskey exchange. Oh my goodness. That's I think that. No, whiskey exchange doesn't have any. Look, tell me how much that that's probably not even available anymore. No. Oh, wow. It is available. <laughs> so Glen Goyne 25 is about, well, you can get it cheaper, but it accelerates 300 quid. Tomato 30, this. And I would have to be careful about who I re recommended this to, because if people are going to splash out, 299 quid is, is online for a 30 year old they're looking for something really special and they're probably looking for an event whiskey this is not an event whiskey this is a whisper this is like familiar comfortable company that you just sit down and take your time don't rush and enjoy it it's not an event There's a nice creaminess now. But every sip communicates maturity in a way that I can't articulate. You just know 
and it's the way that, it, that it's not just the flavors it's the way that it's interacting it's the way that the abv is playing through you can have 46 percent abv whiskey and it's still got lots of vibrant spices and nice prickle um this is not this is so soft Look has seen a quarter of a bottle gone and it's just getting better and better. I can imagine exactly that. I can imagine that when you first poured this, you might have been, what is this about? This is very quiet. Jimmy Legg is asking, the 30 is not okay or drying at all. Absolutely not, Jimmy. Don't confuse. So that's one of the greatest things about you know, using refill casks that it can sit. Now, we don't know if this has been recast. We don't know how many times this has been traded or moved from one cask to another in its life. But to me, this plays like something that's been put in a third fill, fourth fill. I, I honestly don't know cask and just been left alone for 30 years. Yeah. So if we talk about cereal and things, we often think about maltiness and spirit characteristics. That's not, it's a different thing. It's a baked thing. It's almost like a, I don't want to say doughy either because it's not, but I think I'm right on the, the biscuit thing. Elegant, clean, mature, thoroughly integrated, Fruity, soft fruits. What a pleasure. Look, you're a star. This is a lovely, lovely, lovely dram to enjoy. Thank you so much. I get sent a lot of samples, I really do. And I know it's it's tricky for me because they're they're just they're amazing whiskies that you're sending me. But it's 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 difficult for me to to be able to share. I do get through them all eventually, but it's difficult for me to share them all all the time. You'll see that littered up here and here there are samples. I've got the box down there full of samples and things. I do appreciate everything that I get sent, but it's tough. If I drank everything that you sent me, you wonderful, wonderful folk, I'd be in a sorry state. <laughs> Graham Fraser saying, this is one of those whiskies that would be worth buying a dram sample. Well, let me see if uh, Master Malt, they're not, they're not selling it by the dram, but absolutely, I think you're right. I think they should be, but it'd probably be about 30 quid a dram. So it's quite expensive. Um, uh, and a uh, the so-called Dram Tram is saying, I must have missed it. What tomato is this, Roy? Uh, I don't know if it's Caesar. It's probably Matt that's in tonight. Matt, I think it's a, a, it's an amazing thing. It's a 30-year-old tomato, 30 years old, very quiet, very soft, very elegant, very mature. Um, the kind of the kind of dram that... Aha, uh -huh, the kind of dram that you would certainly not look to try and impress anybody with as they're coming into whiskey. I think you would need to have spent some time with a few whiskies before you started to really appreciate something like this. If I had this look, it wouldn't last long. It's right up my street. Texture is there as well. Let me put a wee lid on that. That's, that's getting finished tonight, Luke. <clears throat> Going to unwind in my Sunday evening with a tomato and 30 year old. We'll put it aside just now because there's a, um, a couple other ones that I want to pour as well. How are we get on for time? Five past 11. We should probably get the wheels on and get the quiz on a wee bit. I know there's probably still folk in the background. James is still here. Uh, Mikey's still here. Fantastic Shiv is here. Uh, Jez is obviously, he mentioned earlier that he would have to leave early tonight. Connor, it looks like he might still be here, but he's just uh, away from keyboard, AFK, for now. Um, Jimmy Legacy like had to pour the only tomato I have because of you, 12-year-old French oak. Nice one, Jimmy. It's nice. And that's kind of the thing is that sometimes um, it's nice. If I think of the Lockdown Whiskey Festival, how many is in? Because I'm just going to blurt this out and share this, what I actually want to do with these festivals going forward. Um, 220 of you still in. The Lockdown Festival is a fabulous idea on every single measurable metric, honestly. 
and the the, the things that are not the th where it doesn't hit the mark it can never hit the mark and that's the idea that we are in the same space together that we are literally people getting together and that is always the goal of anything the goal of this channel is to get people together it really really is nothing nothing is better than we, we have a real life meeting that's why the facebook group exists that's why i've decided to, that has to be a thing that we can plan things meetings events to to get together whether i'm there or not it could be just be folk going to visit a distillery or whatever it may be obviously these are difficult times right now but there's a long-term view that i'm having here so in the situation that we're in just now we all jump in and we have this virtual thing this virtual everything literally my notifications on my phone is just going all the time with another whiskey thing another whiskey thing another whiskey thing we're at the point of saturation and that can't endure well maybe it can honestly because everybody will find an audience but there's going to be correction. There's going to be some things that last and some things that don't. If the lockdown whiskey festival is going to continue as a thing, I'm not sure it can continue to exist sitting in the Tomatin brand. The only reason that it's there just now is because of the vigor and the drive and the passion that Scott Adamson and his team at Tomatin put in to making that thing happen, to pull people together from the industry to say, do you want to do this? Let's get together and do this. And it's so it's existing on their channel. And that's fabulous that that's happened. But going forward, there would have to be some kind of independent place for it to live. And it can't be my channel. It, it, it has to be, maybe it could be a round robin thing that Tomatin are able to pass it on to another brand that's participating in another brand and another brand and that's good because the subscribers could potentially follow as well but they need to fill in another missing thing and that is the whiskey as jimmy leg just hit on there he's reached for a tomato because i'm drinking a tomato right now nobody needs to get in the stress of curating tasting packs and shipping tasting packs and sitting and analyzing no a month in advance you release the dram list of what's going to be shared you tell everybody they can buy drams on Master and Mall, on the Whiskey Exchange, they can buy it through the Dram Team, uh, Flavia, any of these companies that are involved in such things. You just release to them, these are the drams we are sharing. Do you want to put together a tasting pack? Make some money over what we're sharing? It's up to you, just go. Everybody do it. Just go ahead and do it. We, we don't want to make money out of this thing, it's just share. If you want to be a fulfillment guy for this, here's a list of the, dra the drams. You want it two months in advance? Fantastic, let's do that. And everybody can say, Lockdown Whiskey Festival, or whatever it's going to be known long term, just says, oh, okay, this. And then they can figure their own. Maybe there's 10 drams getting shared. They only want five. So they just pick their five drams. They can figure a little pack and it gets sent to them. In the States where they can't do drinks by the dram or something, or other territories across the globe, they know the whiskeys in advance. So they can just buy one or two bottles that they might have been curious about anyway, so that they've got something there to sip along then it's got longevity then it's a much bigger thing then it involves more collaboration more value for the community that's viewing more interaction it can never ever replace a festival it's not intended to replace any festival but there are people out there that can't get to festivals in the uk and in europe we're very lucky in the states depends on where you are i guess canada is the same i don't know what it's like in the rest of the world but there are some people that can never, ever get to a festival without significant travel and expense. Um, so, yeah. Stewie Baby saying, pass it on like the Olympics. I'm just thinking out loud here. Jay Francis is saying, just adding to the collaborative. Absolutely. Chris Mir is saying, it was kind of sad to see the low number, 300 of attendees compared to the first lockdown. Chris Mir, no, think about it. My goodness. When the first lockdown whiskey festival went out it was the first ever event that anybody had seen like that of that scale you had twice as many brands so with theoretically with twice the amount of net that twice the amount of pool you had all of those brands are using their own marketing agencies to publicize it that was advertised on radio it was advertised on on the news newspapers so you had lots of kind of drive-by casual people dropping in on that first ever festival as well then you had all the industry people, the curious lurkers, let's say, that knew that they had to provide the same thing in the coming weeks and they had to figure out how to do it. So there would have been some hundreds of those guys in the audience as well. And then all of us 
coming together at that point, we were not overly saturated with whiskey content. We were eager, hungry, and ready for it. It's no surprise to me at all that the numbers dropped. But there were still 250, 300 people in for most of the time. And even after five hours, it was still sitting at 200 people. If the industry starts to see that and, and measure things like that, they're lazy and the marketing people are being lazy. They need to consider, they need to talk to me. They need to talk to me about much longer term vision. They need to talk about a bigger impact thing because it's not those numbers, it's the interactivity, it's the inclusion. That's much, much more important. Anyway, sorry for the rant, but don't judge it based on those numbers. And what an amazing thing that they managed to achieve as well by raising uh, over six grand now for Maggie's. Ross Fudd is saying, I slept right through 5 a.m. watched on replay. Good for you, Ross, for picking up on the replay. Thank you so much, and it's nice to have you in here. Eric is saying, that looks like a new name. Eric, a new logo as well. Eric, if you're new here, you're very, very welcome, my friend. Hope to hear from you this week. Sent an email hoping to help with the branding of a future lockdown festivals. Well, I can't resolve Eric with the email, so um, if you've sent me an email, I'll get to it, no doubt. I've been asking everybody to be a wee bit patient with me. Graham Fraser is saying, I've done a couple of great live tastings during lockdown. Our whiskey in Kilhoman, which I think of because of lockdown. Uh, not sure these will continue after COVID. Some will, some not so much. McAllen Fine Rear Dock is in St. Horst, is running a drink-along tastings following your rationale. You can buy sets of full bottles or sample sets, 5CL minis, weeks ahead. It's the only way to do it, Doc. It's, it's the right thing. Just make it optional. You don't force curated packs on people that don't really want it. If they want to be led and some guidance, fine. But let just tell people what the drams are going to be, more or less. It doesn't need to be exact. And let people buy by the dram or by the bottle. Absolutely. And, and release it to all the fulfillment partners out there. It doesn't matter who they are. If they want to get involved, source some of the whiskey, bottle it, and sell it. And you can say to them, you can use our, our, our festival, you can use our brand, you can use anything to promote the sale of this, as long as you're selling the right whiskey. It's, it all just makes sense. Kim Grant is here. Good to see you, Kevin. It's a great thing to be doing, but they need to patent your easy quiz. Uh, you think they need a bit of interactivity at the end. Kevin Grant is doing quizzes as well on a Thursday night. He usually goes out on Facebook before the VPUB as well. Uh, for for uh, his uh, employer, the Scottish Gantry, up in Stirling. Yeah, talking of the quiz, uh, we're quarter past 11. My guests have been sitting in the background. They've probably fallen asleep with me. Shiv, give me a thumbs up. Mikey, give me a thumbs up. And James, give me a thumbs up if you're good to come in. Shiv, Mikey, James, thank you for your patience. I noticed that Connor, let's see if we pull him in, if you'll wake him up. Connor, are you hearing us, Connor? <laughs> let's drop him out and see if he appears a wee bit later. How are you, boys? Are you okay? Good. Yeah, uh, oh, bit nervous okay. about the quiz though. Ah, that's okay, that's okay. You're nervous with everybody else, Mikey, don't worry about it. Uh, does anybody agree with my sentiments over the, the festival thing? Do you think it's got a, do you think it's got a long term uh, future or do you think that it's only going to exist while we go through these times? I think there's a lot of people around the world that would want to go to that kind of thing that can't. So I think, yeah, why, why shouldn't it? Why it doesn't have to be a thousand people. It can really be a, a very optional thing. But and the, the reason that I've been talking out loud about so many things recently is that I would love it to remain a collaborative thing because otherwise it's brand by brand by brand by brand and it becomes so noisy. And I think the danger is there that they only end up speaking to their own fan base, right? There's no, there's no net cast beyond. I'm going to switch you guys around with the, the chat here. Thank you so much for hanging out in the background. I know it's late on a Sunday night. Um, but you're ready to participate a wee bit in the quiz. What's your normal pass mark, Mikey? What would you be aiming for? <laughs> I am absolutely useless at the quiz, so I'll get that out right now. Um, I am quite happy if I get uh, six. Six out of ten is your target. Chev, don't be shy. Yeah, I've been six, five, six, seven. Eight. Well, let me tell you, I, it's going to be easy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Always. James, do you remember that 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 absolutely really hard time you took for the quiz that you set for me a year or so ago? That easy one that I gave you. Yeah. Yeah, the very easy one. 
I think I scraped a pass mark of six out of ten or something out of it. Um, but it, it was tough. It was tough. A tough quiz. Um, probably one of the toughest quizzes that there's ever been. But I still am very, very grateful you did it, my friend. It's, uh, it's about time that you did another one, what do you think? Uh, if, if you want to put yourself through that again, I can try. <laughs> well, I think what you did is you made a quiz for me. Exactly, exactly. Um, rather than a quick kind of quiz with uh, with with uh, you know the community or the audience or whatever in mind. Um, and I think that's why you had so much blowback on it. I very much enjoyed it. I did enjoy it, but it was tough. Um, but it would be great to have uh, more uh, quizzes and questions coming in from the community. I do love Whiskey Germany is an Instagrammer that started to do quizzes on Instagram, and I've started to participate in that recently. And I won one, um, and uh, I won the dram that was going, which was a bit of having Burgundy. So I have that now, and I got it sent out to the community. Uh, somebody in the community is going to have that arrive on their doorstep in the next couple of days. Um, I'm not going to let. I'm not going to ruin the surprise, but uh, I hope you enjoy it when it gets there. You, are you ready to participate in tonight's easy quiz then, boys? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, let's try it. Fantastic. Let's see if I can bring this in. I wish everybody the best of luck. As always with uh, the quiz at the end, it's multiple choice. You're only keeping your own score. You're only playing against yourself. And you can share how you're scoring uh, in the lounge. Um, you, can have, you can follow the lounge if you see that most of people are guessing a particular thing. But bear in mind, there may be banana skins. Good luck, everybody. We go on to question one. McMira's Grand Tite contains spirit matured in casks seasoned with four green teas and what? A. Pedro Jimenez, B. Oloroso, C. Amontillado. You might notice a lot of these questions have a theme. They have something to do with uh, some of the content that was shared in the lockdown festival yesterday. But this is a new expression, and, and uh, Swedish for green tea is grant tea, I believe. But I want to know, as they macerate, and this is something I just discovered yesterday, if they macerate the tea to season these casks with water, they add something else in um, to, to season the cask. Is it PX, Oloroso, or Amontillado? Mikey, give me a guess, A, B, or C. No idea. I'll go for Oloroso. Guess and B for Oloroso. James Shiv? Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer, so I'm going to go with the crowd and say B. Okay. That's a very, very clever thing to do. The knowledgeable whiskey crowd, most of them tuned in yesterday and they understood uh, Angela Dorazio from McMira, the master blender and whiskey maker there. She's been making whiskey there for about 15 years. Um, but interestingly, I've not tried this, but Scott Adamson has a bottle of it and he opened it during the live yesterday. And he was really, really enjoying it at the end of the stream yesterday. So I'm curious. If you go to uh, McMira's site, by the way, to order that, uh, they will donate eight pounds to the charity, the Maggie's Highlands charity that Tomatin was collecting for in the festival yesterday as well. Okay, question two. Rassi, the Isle of Rassi Distillery, will release its inaugural malt later this year. In the meantime, they've generated revenue and some interest with what range? Is it A, Prometheus? B, work in progress, or C, while we wait. Now, what I'll say about this is that what they're trying to do here is trying to make a whiskey uh, uh, in advance of their own release that's kind of aspirational, that might kind of give some clues as to what they see their profile being going forward. So it's curious. It's a curious thing to do. Um, and what strikes me is that they're going to have to make their whiskey at least as good as the whiskey they've been putting out in advance, right? Have you any idea? Give me a thumb or a head shake or a... No. <clears throat> oh, Mikey's struggling. No idea once again, so I'll have a guess. I'll say work in progress. Work in progress. Shiv, you think what? Why we wait. And James? Uh, same as Shiv, yeah, actually. While we wait, absolutely. Prometheus is Glasgow Distillery. And a work in progress was the famous a series that came out from Kilcarran in advance of their release as well. I'm amazed that most more distilleries don't do what Kilcarran were doing. Um, don't come out with your inaugural and no age statement nonsense. Be honest, do what Kilcarran did and say, here we are at three years old. Here we are at four years. It's just why would they do that, right? Let people know that it's batch. It's going to be minimal release and things. I'm not, nothing against Rassi and their kind of unique take on things. I often wonder why distilleries didn't realize how successful the Kilcarran one was. Anyway, question three. 
Tam Do's annual special release for Spirit of Space Side is called. Now I had to I had to work out how to pronounce this yesterday. Gordon Dundas told me that it's Dalby Alley. Uh, named after what? What is Dalby Alley named after? Is it named after a nearby hilltop? Is it named after a train station? Or is it named after a river tributary? Eric Waite is saying that Whiskey Crusaders just reviewed uh, a Rassi while we wait. Jimmy Legg is saying, uh, why can't they all, we all be as smart as Glenn Guile? There you go. Now, I can see Shiv having a wee head scratch there. What are you thinking, Shiv? Do you know this or are you guessing? Uh, an educated guess. I think I'll go with a train station. Okay, your volume's a wee bit quiet there. I'm not sure what you said, my friend, but just say A, B, or C. B. You think B, a train station, Mikey? <coughs> train station. James? Yeah, I think the other two, I think a train station's a random thing to choose if it wasn't that, so I'm going to say B as well. I don't know the answer, but I'll go B. Oh, he's trying to second guess how I would put it together. I did actually share that there is a train station there at Knockdo next to Tamdu Distillery, and it turns out that that's the name of it. Dalby Alley is the name of the train station. Um, and uh, for the Spirit Space Side Festival, they use the, the old train station there. It's disused now. They use it as a shop and a, and a event space for the festival, and they named their annual release after it. So there you go. Question four, which of these is not a stable mate of Pulteney Distillery? Not a stable mate of Pulteney. Is it A, Speyburn, B, Balmainach, or C, Glen Spey? So you have to know your owners to know this. But Pulteney, the brand is old Pulteney, of course. It's owned by uh, uh, Inverhaus, Thai Beverage. Which of those distilleries is not a stable mate? Shane is saying you can tell who was paying attention yesterday. And Greg's whiskey guide from France, good to see you, Greg. He's saying I sense a banana skin on a few questions. There may be banana skins on the road ahead. Guys, do you know this one? Give me a thumb if you do. Mikey's shaking his head and Shiv's not sure. What would you guess, Shiv? Uh, B. B. Mikey? Uh, my guess is Speyburn. It's just a guess. And James? Uh, I think Glenn Spey is Diageo, so I might be wrong on that, but I'm going to say C. Nailed it. Glenn Spey is a flora and fauna from Diageo. Absolutely. The other two, Speyburn and Balmenach, are stablemates of Pulteney Distillery owned by Inverhouse. Well done. Go on to the question. The picture question, sorry. And I think this is easy. Come on, this is easy, boys. Don't blurt it out. Don't share it. Don't tell everyone. I'm going to ask you what distillery are we looking at here? Are we looking at Craig and Moore? Dalmore or Bowmore. Jimmy Legs on four out of four. Can they not see the chat? I hope they're not following the chat, but the thing you've got to remember, uh, Jimmy, is that they are probably about 10 or seconds ahead of the chat. So if I get the answers out of them before they've had a chance to look, they're just playing the exact same as you guys are as well. Based on that, James, have you been here? Uh, I think so, but every time you put a picture up, I get it wrong, so I'm, I'm sure I'm going <laughs> to... Where think, do you think it is? I think it's for more, but we'll see. Mikey? I try not to look at the uh, chat, by the way, and just try to answer it uh, blindly. That's the reason I get uh, really, really low marks, but <laughs> I think that's a, a bow more picture, but I could be wrong. Would you disagree with that, Shiv? Okay, everybody's kicked out of the park. If I look at the crowd, Anthony is saying C, 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 C. Virtually, I've, oh, there are a few people that I that I did catch out with this one. I thought that that would be a... Lots of people, Rooker Lax is saying, been there. Absolutely, we're looking at Bamor Distillery on Isla in the capital of Isla. Well done, guys. Fantastic. Halfway point, how are you scoring? Just give me a hand. Four, three, five. Oh, James Hope on fire. Question six, which of these new distilleries have been built just a few meters from a lost distillery of the same name? A, Lag, B, Wolfburn, C, Daft Mill. Now, I tripped over this. I had no idea that this was a thing, and then I read it, and it was a thing, and I was surprised, so I put it in the quiz. Lots of five out of fives. I told you, I said, I didn't I say it was going to be easy. A wee Sunday night uh, lazy V-pub. <laughs> an easy quiz to enjoy before the week. Guys, any clues? Uh, possibly, 
I might, might be a banana skin this, but I'm going to say wolf burn because I think there was a wolf burn not far away from the the new one. I can see the maker nod from Mikey. He seems to agree. Is that right? It's going to be a guess again. Wolfburn was my guess. Absolutely. Apparently, Wolfburn, of course, is on an industrial estate up in Thurzo, but 350 meters along the road. Apparently, there was once the original Wolfburn distillery, long since lost. I wonder if they've got any idea whether they were able to remake the original distillery character. But I didn't know that. I had no idea that Wolfburn was a lost distillery. It's amazing what you learn. Question seven in 2019, which distillery opened a town center shop, education center and gallery in the town close to where it's located? So just last year, this this was opened. Is it A, Glen Kinchy opening in Edinburgh? Was it B, Oban opening in Oban? Or was it C, Highland Park opening in Kirkwall? So instead of having the traditional distillery, uh, visitor center shop in the town center close to where they're located, they opened a shop not only to sell whiskey, also a bit of an education center and art gallery uh no doubt a bit of a tribute to the local distillery and these kind of things but is it glen kinchy in edinburgh b oban or c uh, highland park up in orkney guess away shiv no i know this uh highland park uh, you think highland park mikey my guess was going to be Oban, but I'm not so confident now after Shiv's answer. But I'll stick with Oban. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stick why, with Oban. Don't stick with not? Oban. Okay, uh, Highland Park, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> James? Um, I'll admit to having no idea, but I believe Shiv does know he's Highland Park, so I'm going to go Highland Park. <laughs> <laughs> would you have gone Highland Park if Shiv wasn't so confident? It would have been a stab in the dark. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, yeah. absolutely. It's Highland Park. Opened a shop right in the centre of the cut. Well, well done, Shiv. Well done. Let's see how the crowd got on. Glenn Kinchy was under construction when he visited Eric as well in 2019. But of course, um, as part of the Johnny Walker experience, uh, yes, Glenn Kinchy uh, will have um, a presence in Edinburgh going forward in the future, but it doesn't exist quite yet. Uh, most people scoring pretty well tonight. Five, six out of seven. I'm looking for a seven out of seven. Oh, it looks like that one or the one before it has lost a few. Orange Wheel always scores really, really well. He's on seven out of seven. And you'll notice for anybody that's in the Barflies membership, uh, there's a brand new emoji for 10 out of 10 tonight. Hope you have a bit of fun with that. Okay, question eight. How long has Glenn Grant's master blender, Dennis Malcolm, been making whiskey there? Anybody heard of Dennis Malcolm? Is it A, less than 18 months? B, around 25 years? C, more than 50 years. Oh, silence from our participants tonight. It's a difficult one, right? It's one of those ones you'd be tempted to bang away on the keys. Dennis Malcolm, Dennis Malcolm, Dennis Malcolm. Who's that? Some guests. Sorry? C, I'm going to say. Mikey? Ooh, I'll go A then. Opposite end of the spectrum. Okay, you're going to go for less than 18 months. Yeah. Mikey, I have to tell you the entire lounge is screaming C. I'm not looking at it. <laughs> I'm not looking at it. That you've made that clear, buddy. A nice, honest <laughs> gameplay from you, I have to say. But uh, Shiv and James are absolutely bang on more than 50 years. I think there's a, a bit of a misprint in the Malt Whiskey yearbook. They're saying that he joined in 1961. Um, on the Glen Grant website, they talk about him making whiskey there for 50 years. I have to say, he still looks very young and sprightly. Um, but if that's true about 1961, depending on when he started making whiskey, then he's been doing it longer than Dave Stewart at Balvenie, which has been widely regarded as the guy who's been making whiskey the longest. So I guess it depends on what your role was and what you were doing. But there you go, more than 50 years for Dennis Malcolm. Boutique Whiskey Company last year released a world whiskey blend at a specific 41.6%. Now I had it here, it's, it's gone out of reach. I had it yesterday. I bought a bottle of this. Why was it at 41.6%? Is it A, to match map coordinates? B, to match the number of components in the blend? C, to match a postcode? Give me a head shake or a nod, guys, if you've got any clue. Okay, so we know that these guys were busy Otherwise, social distancing during the, the whiskey festival yesterday. Mm -hmm. This was shared during the festival. Um, 
but give us a guess. Mikey, what do you say? Oh, dear. Um, <clears throat> uh, a number of components. Shiv. I go with A. Match, uh, Map match. coordinates. Yeah. James? Yeah, I can see what the crowd's saying, but I don't think I would have gone with that, so I think I would have probably gone with B. I, I don't know. I can tell you that the crowd are obviously always <laughs> worth following. It's to match a postcode. Sam Simmons, the guy who put this together for the Petite Whiskey Company, um, they ended up at 41.6 ABV to match his Toronto, I think it was. I want to say Toronto, maybe Ontario. Regardless, it was uh, for Sam. I do apologise. I'm not sure where you're from, but 41.6. Uh, that's the, to match his postcode. There you go. Let me let me know your scores, guys. Shiv, how are you doing? Seven. Mikey's on four. He needs the last four. one. That's it. That's Shiv. Right. Seven for Shiv. Oh, well done. So you've only you've only had one banana skin so far, James. You always score well, don't you, in the quizzes? Yeah. I make it a bit easy for right. you. <laughs> uh, let's see what this looking for the scores. Uh, lots of eights. Orange Wheel is still maintaining it. He's on nine out of nine. I'm looking for other nine out. Lots and lots of eights. Great scoring tonight. I think it's a relatively soft quiz, I have to say. Um, it depend, depends, though. I can... Mikey's still looking for his pass mark. Doc is saying Dennis Malcolm started as a Cooper, then Brewer in 1971, so not a master not master blender for 50 plus years. Thank you, Doc. Chris B, seven out of nine. Lindsay Holman, five out of nine. Jimmy Jazz, six. Chris Max Wildlife, eight. Dan Levy, good to see you, Dan. Looks like a new name. Welcome in, my friend. Six out of nine. Everwind, five. Kirk on seven, Stewie Baby on seven, and loads and loads of you on eight. Vicky Thompson, Scott Allen, Bud Jenkins, Shane is on eight. Graham Fraser, Desi Vleeland. Yeah, lots of high scores tonight. Let's see if the last one's a banana skin. Question 10, which of these producers offers an official bottling from all of its currently producing malt distilleries? I hope that that makes sense. We want a producer that has a core range single malt from all of its working, currently producing distilleries. Is it A, Inverhouse, Thai Beverage, already mentioned tonight, John Duren Sons, which of course is Bacardi, or C, Diageo? We're looking for a producer from those three that has a single malt from every one of its single malt distilleries. See how the quiz, let's see how the lounge gets on with this one. Oh, guys, you have to be a wee bit jealous of this tomato in my glass, are you not? Have you tried yes. it? No, no, never had that one. It's very subtle, very complex, very elegant, delicious. Okay, wow. Okay, what do you think, boys? Let's get some commitment I'm, out of you. I don't sure. know. I'm wanting help from the crowd on this. I have to get the pass mark, but uh, I'm not sure. The banana skin has arrived. I think I would dis. I feel like I want to discount A, um, because of um, Balmanek maybe. Um, okay. But so it's between the other two. All right. I don't know. I think maybe it's a banana skin. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say you're trying to trick us, and I'm gonna go uh, Diageo. I was going to go that as well, so I'm with you, James. Chev, you C. disagree? No, I disagree. I think it's B, John Dewar and Sons. I might be wrong. Uh, B. Chev thinks it's B. I can tell you that I can, but by looking at the crowd, they're not going to be very happy either because it is indeed a banana skin. John Dewar. <sighs> ah. Only one that has something from all of its malt producing distilleries. The Agio don't release anything from Rosale. Oh, that's true. And you're spot on with Thai Beverage or Inverhouse. They don't release, well, they release Deerstalker, but not mm. as a Balmainac. So you're right there. And uh, obviously, uh, Bacardi, they have uh, Aberfeldy, Altmore, Craig uh Royal Brackler, uh, the Deveron, Glen Deveron. 
So, so we have malt from all of their distilleries. Maybe not under that distillery name, but they release a core range from all the distilleries. How did you score an end, James Hope? You did very well. Uh, eight, eight out of ten. Happy with that. Mikey didn't scrape his pass oh, mark. No, no, not, not passed. Remind me, how did we get on with the uh, with the is it a space side? Um, you uh, guess my Dinson twelve. Oh yes, my low hanging fruit. <laughs> Uh, you've been very, very kind to me tonight. Thank you, Mikey. You're Shiv, welcome. how did you score? How did you get on? Eight. Brilliant. Superb. Well done. Decent scoring. So I, I guess as an aggregate over uh, the remainders, for, if Connor would have been in, it would have been super interesting to see how he'd have scored tonight, right? Yes. Um, and I did not make this quiz with Connor in mind. You can see I think it's a, a reasonably uh, mid-pitched quiz. Let's see how we're doing. Anyone at 10, anyone using the new... Uh, emoji. I'm looking for orange wheel. Bloody Balmenic. <laughs> he slipped up on a banana skin at the end. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, orange wheel. I'm so sorry, my friend. That's uh, Rule, I think his name is. He's saying poop. He's gutted. Listen, I have to say thank you for your honesty. Greg Bors is on 9 out of 10, as is Neil Cochran. Luke Gix of Skipper, 9 out of 10. So many people just almost getting close. But I think that banana skin would have scuppered a few right at the end. I have to say that wasn't originally question 10 and I decided that it could be a bit of a banana skin tonight and I ripped it out and I stuck it right in at the end just to be a wee bit cheeky. Listen guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope it's been okay for you to um, hang around and stay till the end. I know that it's, it's a quiet uh, Sunday evening. You should probably be in bed and things, but I appreciate you hanging out with me here. It's wonderful to have you. Stay until the end for a wee bit of a debrief if you'd like, if you can. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll raise my glass and say goodnight to you before I finish up tonight. And uh, I look forward to, well, I look forward to you having back in a VPUB, but I'd love to see you in real life soon, maybe down in London. Thank you, thank you for everything you did for me recently, my friend. I love no you, man. Problem. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. James Hope, I wish you all the very best for everything, all the challenges that face you and everybody in your industry going forward, my friend. Slant you for joining again, buddy. Yeah, Take care. Sure. I'll see you soon. Shiv, Always looking forward to give you a hug, man. And I hope it's uh, sooner rather than later for both of our sakes. Sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining, Shiv. Good night, buddy. Wonderful stuff. Belfast Whiskey Club. That'll probably be Paul. Grab a dram for yourself. I had fun tonight. Thanks again, Paul. Thank you so much for your virtual dram, my friend. I've got a tiny wee drop of uh, this tomato and 30. I'm going to save. No, I'm not. This is getting drunk tonight. It's absolutely delicious. I've only had two drams. I had the... The Timorous Beastie. Uh, no, it wasn't the Timorous Beastie. I had the Rock Island 21, and I've had this. I'm going to savor this. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to say thank you to everybody for relaxing with me on another Sunday night. Extended opening VPUB. You'll see me again on Thursday. Of course, I've mentioned to you uh, that I'm uh, looking forward to welcoming uh, Billy Walker. Uh, that's uh, Shamini Charlie has just joined the Barflies. That's Kinogot. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but welcome in Shamini Charlie as well. It was great to have you there yesterday at the festival. And um, Whiskey Barbecues bought me a dram and said, here, to the one out of 10 banana. That's brilliant that you're being that honest. At least you managed to get off uh, the starting blocks and, and get yourself a point. It's a, it's a tough quiz sometimes. You only know if you know, right? And Espen has bought me a dram as well to say eight out of 10. Not bad for me. Slant you to you. Thank you all and welcome on. Uh, with the Aquavite Barflies, Shimini Charlie. Slancha. There was a few new members tonight, and I apologise if I missed you, if I was doing or talking about something else at the time. It's wonderful to have you all supporting. Beyond Billy Walker uh, on Thursday night, um, I'm hoping that Sunday, a week from now, uh, I'll be back here again. I'm still desperately trying to lock in a night that I can get together with patrons, patrons, uh, hang tight I, I will manage to do something i've got something planned and i'm looking forward to it and then um a week on thursday i'm looking forward to welcoming in uh, julianne fernandez who's the whiskey maker the master blender for distel in charge of deanston bunahaven uh tobermory and lechick so i'm excited about that too the next few weeks going forward we're fairly booked out for uh the, is it a space side cr crowd but by all means i'll start a wee waiting list. So if you're interested in participating in that going forward, doesn't matter if you're in a group or on your own, get in touch with me by email and uh, I'll add you to the waiting list. This has been a wonderful Sunday evening for me, very comfortable, very relaxed and always great to hang out with you. Um, looking forward to welcoming you on Thursday's VPUB with Billy Walker. 
In the meantime, I'll raise a glass of this magnificent tomato and I'll say thank you, Whiskey Folk. I love you all. Slanchevar.